G'day and welcome to this tutorial for Top Gear GTA. I've had a lot of people ask me about how to create the intro which you saw before, about all the video panels and things, so now I've had a bit of time and I've finally put something together to try and help you guys out. Now this is um, more so demonstrating a method of doing things as opposed to a physical this is what you do, then this is what you do, then this is what you do, and make sure you set these settings right or it won't work. Okay, basically um, what I've got here is a series of clips that I've taken outside my place of cars driving past and the like. Alright, so rather than using uh, Grand Theft Auto footage this time, I'm just going to uh, go through this and then hopefully that will make a bit of sense. Now, although the actual shots look fairly complicated, this technique is actually really simple. Trust me, you're going to find this out in a second. All we're generally using is keyframed masks for the different layers. Okay, so this is my first one, which is the one you can see here. It's a nice uh, forward focus, I believe. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to choose a part of the uh, footage which we think is interesting, say perhaps the middle. And if we have a look up here, we've got the rectangle tool. Now, with any layer selected, that's going to turn into a rectangular mask tool. So if you click once on there, and then click and drag on here, you can see it's then almost sort of like reverse cropping something. Okay, so what we can do is we can drag a spot. If you hold down spacebar, you can then move that around while you're dragging, which is quite helpful. So I'm just going to put one, we'll make it about there. And with that one still selected, you can actually create more of these. So we might move one there as well. And all of a sudden, before you realize it actually is looking a little bit like that intro already. Now what I've done in a couple of these shots, which you, um, you might have seen, is the actual lines and things were moving around. Now the way you do that is you come up here and uh, see how we've got mask 1 and mask 2. If you select both of those and then twirl them down, you'll notice that there's a couple of different keyframes for these. And what you need to do is click on the stopwatch for mask path. Now what you can do is from that point to whatever point you want, you can actually then move these masks around. So with this um, selection tool selected, you can double click on the edge of one of these and you can actually push and pull these around. So I might move that one over here, hitting enter to confirm that, and we'll do the same for this one. Move that around like that. And as you can see down here, we've now created two more keyframes. So what this is telling After Effects is between this point and this point, we're going to move those around and you can see those moving like that. So if we deselect that you can see the effect. Okay, so pretty simple stuff there. Alright, so it looks like we've got that one done, so let's twirl that one up and let's have a look at our next layer. Now you notice that we do have a bit of space around here now that we've masked this off. So holding down shift once you've clicked on this, we can shift this all the way up to the top or even cut it off if we want to and we've got a bit of space down the bottom. So how about we grab this second clip of ours, which is this one of a uh, Land Cruiser. And we'll move that one. Oh, we'll put it about here, I think. And now let's uh, do the same technique. Let's grab something which is interesting. So we might grab the whole middle section. And uh, with that one still selected, we can make as many of these rectangles as we want. That looks pretty good. Clicking on this or hitting V, you can then... Yeah, drag this whole thing down, and that looks like it fits it quite well. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. Now, it's a simple case of knowing when to do the next thing. It's generally as soon as something disappears, like that, then you can um, insert something else. So what have we got as our next thing here? Okay, now we've got another thing like this. Okay, so it's just a case of just do something completely random doesn't really matter what it is. Let's drag that one down as well. Okay, now the, now the next one has disappeared. So let's grab this one. You see, so there's no ex exact science to this, it's just a case of completely doing random things. 
and uh, in the end you'll actually find it looks quite cool. Now with this one at the top here, what we might do is we might move some things around. Now another method which you can use is actually grabbing these individual keyframes and moving them. Before we do that, we need to make sure we make all these animating. So that's that. All these ones should have now animated. So now let's go up here and using um, Shift we can select these points that we want. So we might grab those and we might grab those ones. So from there, let's uh, move off to the end here and we can now pull these up and down like that. So we might do one like that. And that's looking pretty good there. Alright, so it's just really simple and it's really up to you as far as your creativity, as far as how you tackle all this. One thing I've noticed about the original video which the actual BBC uses is there's a couple of random colourful silhouettes of um, people doing things and foot pedals and whatnot in the actual intro video. Now while I didn't actually want to go through how I created this, I've put together one which we can use and I'll provide a download link for this video as well. But essentially it's just uh, someone getting punched in the head, which is quite amusing. Alright, so we'll, we'll put that one in in the middle there perhaps. We might um, scale it down, make it look a bit more sort of misplaced. And if we want to, um, we can use the same technique with this video as well. So using yes, uh, using masks we can um, mask off certain areas like this. All of a sudden it looks quite cool as well. Alright, now I'm not going to go through and do all of this, but you get the general idea about how it all works. It all flows together quite well. And then uh, it's just a case of filling out as much footage as you have, and then that's going to be your intro video. Now the only um, other thing which I can suggest perhaps is that we do some overall colour correction to this series of clips. And uh, if we were going to do that, I'd recommend we use an adjustment layer rather than doing things to individual files. So just right click on any empty space, go New Adjustment Layer, and that'll bring that one down. And over here, let's add a Curves 1, drag and drop it on there. Yeah, and the great thing about an adjustment layer is it will adjust everything. Alright, so let's bring this stuff down like that. Nice contrasty curve. Let's perhaps boost the reds, boost the greens, and we'll take down the blues. Alright, now let's uh, apply a tint to that, double clicking on there, and we can then adjust how much we want it to affect that. Alright, so you can see we've created some um, reasonably nice looking footage in a fairly short amount of time. And that's all quite cool and quite random. Alright, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, just um, yeah, leave a comment or send me a message. And um, I'm hoping this is able to help some of you guys. Alright, we'll see you next time.